Hi, I'm Dr. Leanne Kessler, a consultant specializing in science communication. It's Wednesday, August 14th, and it's time for your Fusion News update. Stories today include, one, Bill Gates-backed Type 1 Energy lands massive seed extension to commercialize fusion power. Two, more interest national funding for fusion in Japan and South Korea. Three, tokamak plasmas with density up to 10 times the Greenwald limit. Four, Helion secures license for Polaris Fusion. Five, nuclear fusion prototype will be UK's NASA moment. I also have a bonus for you at the end, so stick around. One, Bill Gates backed Type 1 Energy lands massive seed extension to commercialize fusion power. FIA member Type 1 Energy, a Stellarator company located in Tennessee, raised over $50 million in extension led by Bill Gates' Breakthrough Energy Ventures. This round of funding was intended to speed up progress and to bring in funding partners familiar with Asian markets. CEO Christopher Maury says, Southeast Asia is ground zero for climate change. If we don't get Southeast Asia to net zero, it doesn't matter what the rest of us do. So it's incredibly important in terms of mitigating climate change and decarbonizing the world's energy system. Type 1 Energy wants to build on the successes at Vendelsen 7X, a accelerator experiment in Germany using supercomputer-assisted modeling and simulation to create an improved Stellarator design. They are also using high-temperature superconducting magnet cables designed at MIT, the same technology used at FAA member Commonwealth Fusion Systems. In other Stellarator news, 24 plasma physicists in the U.S. published a white paper in support of a flexible Stellarator physics facility. The letter contends that a Stellarator user facility is in line with the national decadal vision for commercial fusion energy and would build upon the success on the W7X facility in Germany. Two, more interest and national funding for fusion in Japan and South Korea. Both Japan and South Korea have made recent announcements related to national investment in fusion energy technology. The Korean Ministry of Science announced plans to invest 866 million dollars in the development of fusion devices and infrastructure over a decade starting in 2026. This project, named Dream Energy, will focus on technology development of both large domestic devices and other smaller projects. Universities will be supporting fusion majors and other subjects to support the development of a fusion industry workforce. It will also promote public-private partnerships, not just with fusion companies, but also the larger supporting industry. Oh Young Kook, President of the Korean Institute of Fusion Energy said, new startups in the nuclear fusion sector, such as Enable Fusion, have been emerging as of late in Korea as well. As many large and small size companies involved in the K-Star and ITER projects have accumulated experience, we plan to create an ecosystem for fusion energy together with the private sector, universities, and research institutes. In Japan, the Minister of Economy, Trade, and Industry announced plans to revise a roadmap for their national strategy for fusion power to demonstrate electricity generation by the 2030s, instead of the original date set in 2050. This came alongside a Japanese government delegation visit to FIA member First Light Fusion in July. 3. Tokamak plasmas with density up to 10 times the Greenwald limit. In experiments at the Madison Symmetric Taurus at the University of Wisconsin, researchers generated plasmas that were stable at 10 times the empirical Greenwald density limit, well beyond what has been previously demonstrated in experimental devices. The Greenwald density limit was defined in 1988 as the electron density limit above which a tokamak plasma would be unstable. It is determined by the plasma current and the size of the device. While this empirical limit has been known about for decades and only rarely broken, the mechanisms and physics behind the apparent barrier to tokamak operation is still unknown, though it is likely related to radiative power loss within the plasma. The high Greenwald fraction at MST is still not fully understood, but it seems to be related to a few unique features of the device, its thick conductive walls and adjustable power supply. While these conditions aren't necessarily representative of a future fusion power plant, understanding how the results at MST came about could help researchers understand the physics behind the density limit and help inform future tokamak design. There were several other physics articles about fusion in the past few weeks that might be of interest, covering topics including using gamma rays to measure the fusion reaction rate, a liquid lithium coolant, and fusion neutron damage to semiconductors. These are all linked in the description if you want more information. Four, Helion secures license for Polaris Fusion. 
FIA member Helion Energy has received a license from the Washington State Department of Health to operate its next fusion device, called Polaris, which is planned as a demonstration of electricity production. This follows the July passage of the Advance Act in the U.S. Congress, which codified fusion energy regulations separate from nuclear fission and involves states in the regulation of fusion energy. Five, nuclear fusion prototype will be UK's NASA moment. Two recent BBC articles covered the spherical tokamak for energy production, or STEP, being built in Nottinghamshire in the UK after a launch event at the end of July. The device is being built at the site of a decommissioned coal power plant. And the first art article is a generally enthusiastic piece, quoting local mayor Claire Ward. It is the UK's NASA moment, the chance to develop brand new technology and change the world. We're incredibly lucky to be the place where fusion will start and will build great opportunities for people in this region. And it's a global opportunity too. The second article, while overall optimistic on fusion, highlights some of the technical challenges to putting fusion power on the grid. University of Manchester lecturer Dr. Anik Khan highlighted the need for building up expertise in the field, saying, We need to be training up a huge number of people with the skills to work in the field, and I hope the technology will be used in the latter half of the century. Finally, check out the Bodas Fusion News this week. A TED Talk from Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory Physicist on laser-based fusion energy, an art display in San Ramon, California, in honor of fusion ignition at the National Ignition Facility, and finally, a podcast about FIA member Zap Energy. That's all for Fusion News this week. Stay tuned for our next update. Please like and subscribe for more Fusion News, and check out the links in the description if you want further information.